Welcome. This is Dr. Owen Anderson, and we're talking about basic religions. This assumes that we already know what religion is, that religion is a set of basic beliefs that we use to give meaning to our experiences. And so we want to look at basic religion or basic religions as sort of uh, religions that numerous people groups share in common. So even though some of the details and obviously the, the names because of the language differences, those things are different, there's a very strikingly similar structure. And we want to get to know what that is so that when we encounter it in one area of the world and then we encounter it in a completely separate area of the world that's not in contact with the first one, uh, we can say, yeah, that, that's, that's basic religion. They have that in common, even though they didn't seem to have uh, contact that we know of. So some features of this One, the uh, original deity exists alongside a beginningless material substance. So two things, or is that substance, such as uh, the deity, and his body so that the world is formed the earth and as we now know it out of this substance or the body of god i'll say the deity because we're going to use the word god differently so this deity creates other spirits or gods who then are the ones who make this world and guide humans. The regional deity is now distant, hidden, unaware of us, some version of that. So we'll see that when we look at what are called the Hohokam Chronicles, where the world is made out of, the stuff of the world is made out of the original deity's body, but then lesser spirits are created to form that stuff into what we now see around us. And so human interaction is almost always just with these other spirits or gods. You don't, you don't have any interaction with that original deity or very little second uh, prayer to these lesser deities or spirits or dead ancestors because the dead often take on that role of one of these spirit guides also so you pray to a dead relative for intercession to help you in this life very common and that the dead may require rituals out of you and that's the next one salvation from uh, suffering is through suffering and evils is through rituals You have to perform certain rituals exactly right. And if you do that, then the blessing happens like rain comes. And so this requires uh, performance of rituals, requires a priestly class trained in their duties. So you have to have priests who are especially religious. They're set apart from everyone else. And they know the rituals and you don't. So you better make sure the priests don't get unhappy with you. Or it goes the other way too. If the priests are doing their work, but they're not getting the outcome that your culture wants, then the culture can get mad at the priests and, and, and execute them and start over with new priests. So you have um, gifted humans who can access 
magical powers in the world and learn to control these. So there are magical powers in the world and you wanna to learn to control them. I'm gonna say two kinds of magic here. You wanna to learn to control them. And so you might have to send your kid to a uh, uh, training school to learn how to become uh, a witch and use a wand and, and uh, say spells. And people really like that kind of story. And only special people can do that. The ordinary people, you can even have a term for the ordinary people, can't do it. And there's two kinds of magic. What I mean by that is sometimes magic is a force, not unlike gravity. It's called, uh, put a parenthesis within a parenthesis, an occult force at a distance So just like gravity, you might say, without touching the moon, Earth keeps gravity in its orbit. Gravity seems to work at a distance like that. So there's this kind of magic where I don't have to push your shoulder. I can say some word and go like this, and across the room, you get pushed away, right? Abracadabra, boom, and you fly over there. That's just a force. You just got to know the right words and it happens. But then there's also magic that's personal where you contact something, often called a demon. And you say, look, if I promise my soul, can I please get a girlfriend? And I'll say, yeah, sure. Sign right here in your blood and you get a girlfriend. So that's not the same as the first kind, but that's another view of magic is that you're, you're contacting powerful forces that can do things for you. And they often want something in return. So gifted humans who can access those things. Then there is um, insight through special religious experiences, often brought on by drugs or physical stress. You uh, distress your body. Maybe you get super dehydrated, super tired, and super hungry. You don't eat, you don't sleep, and you don't drink water, and you go wandering in the desert. And in that condition, a spirit talks to you and gives you some insights. Or you use peyote or soma. You throw the soma in the fire, and as it burns and you're inhaling the smoke, you're dancing around it, which is also making your body exhausted and dehydrated. And the combination of breathing in the soma fumes and being dehydrated, again, you're spoken to by a spirit and you get insights. So the idea is that these special religious experiences are more true than our ordinary religious experiences, rather than the other side. You might go the other way and say, well, obviously, that's a hallucination, right? It has nothing to do with reality. I was tired and breathing in soma this is reality my normal experiences but in these religions they invert that and say no this is when you're actually in touch with reality some teaching about reincarnation or an afterlife where you continue on your soul's journey and make up for past mistakes your soul has to be cleansed. I should put this up here real quick. Through rituals. Uh, very common are cleansing rituals to set you apart for special religious acts. And I put that up there. Cleansing rituals to set you apart for special religious acts. First, you go through the cleansing ritual. Then you go on your, your uh, uh, journey. We are dehydrated, et cetera, and you have the special religious experience. So that comes down here. This is a continuation of, of uh, cleansing or purgation of your soul. So you'll find that in the Roman church. 
the teaching of this exact word, purgatory. You're not stuck in hell forever, but you're not good. For, you're not ready for heaven. So you go somewhere else where evil is burned off of you. You go through purgation. So you're ready to climb the mountain and, and view God, who's distant. So you have to climb a mountain to get to God. So some belief about that, the transmigration of the soul, reincarnation usually means I was in another body, now I'm in this one, then I'll be in another one. But usually in any reincarnation system, the goal is to get out of your body to go on this kind of journey. You don't just want to reincarnate forever. And then eight. Actually, that's seven. That's why I have seven. I'm going to say, um, so when we're studying a given religion, we can see similarities with this basic religion. There's going to be differences, but there's, I would argue, more similarities. And so in our case, we want to look at ways where Christianity, how much is Christianity a call to repent from this religion and how much did European Christians adapt Christianity to their uh, friar European version of basic religion? Do you understand the difference between those? That's uh, to what extent is Christianity saying repent from idolatry? And return to the living God. Versus when we encounter Christians, let's say the Franciscans in the Southwest, and when they're explaining Christianity to the Pueblo, the way they're explaining it sounds just like another one of the basic religions. The European version with European names, Sp particularly Spanish names. The Spanish at that time had been in a long uh, conflict with Islam. They had just retaken the Iberian Peninsula from Islam right before Columbus sailed. And so they, they view the sailing of Columbus as another part of the Crusades against Islam. And so they're very set on their identity as Spanish Christians. So then they encounter other peoples, and we're going to look in the details of, yeah, you know, what did the Franciscans first and then Jesuits tell the Native Americans of the Southwest. And to what extent was that another version of the basic religions versus biblical Christianity? So basic religions, and, and we could do that in numerous parts of the world, not just the Southwest. That's one area of research right now for me, but we can look at that in other areas as well. So basic religions, not every basic religion has all of these, but they have most of these in some variation. 